Erin Williams continues to post her kids on social media, use her kids for content, and recently she put her daughter's birthday party behind a paywall. And just last year, Erin said the focus of her content would never be her kids. We have a lot to talk about today. Most of you know this by now, but Erin charges for some of her Instagram content. She charges $4.99 per month. Okay guys, it's literally such a breath of fresh air to be on subscriber only stories lately because I feel like the happier I get, the more pissed off people get. So they're really out right now lately. So hi, I missed you guys. I have a screenshot where Erin shared how many Instagram subscribers she has. I can't find the screenshot. It's in one of my videos, but I'm pretty sure the number was over 2,000. So let's just say for easy math, she has 2,000 Instagram members. At $4.99 a month, she's making right around $10,000 just off of her Instagram membership. I wanted to throw that in so I could give you guys an idea of what she could be making on Instagram. This past weekend, Erin threw a birthday party for one of her girls, and she posted this to Instagram. Subscribe to Erin Williams. The rest of this weekend will be subscriber only. So everyone knew she was throwing this birthday party this weekend. So she's using her daughter's birthday as content, as a way to get subscribers and earn money. That's using your kids for content, in my opinion. Ryan was there filming at the birthday party, so I'm sure they'll have an entire episode about this birthday party on Aaron and Nick Uncut. In order to prep for this video, I went back and watched one of my older videos. It was from May of 2021, and I talk about Aaron saying, the focus of her content will never be her kids. She's going to stop focusing on her kids for content. And I grabbed this screenshot out of my video. You'll probably notice if you're an OG that a ton of my old videos are down that were centered around the girls. You probably also notice that I don't show them as much anymore. They will always be a part of my channel and content all around. But when I reevaluated, I decided they should never be the main focus. If they want a channel one day, I'll be glad to help and guide them through that decision. YouTube has been a little bit, you know, a lot toxic. So it seems like Erin has changed her mind. It's what, a year later, a little over a year later, and she's back to focusing on her kids for content. In my opinion, using your child's birthday to get new Instagram subscribers and to get content for your paywall is focusing on your kids for content. I mean, you're using them for content. You guys know every week she puts up a teaser and I'm sure she'll have a teaser put up of this birthday party on YouTube and Erin has said, I just played a clip of her saying how toxic YouTube is, but she continues to put her kids on YouTube. I have a few clips of the birthday party I wanna show you, but first, if you haven't seen this video, you have to go check it out next because I cover another situation where I believe Erin was using her kids for content recently as well. I'll link it right here. Now let's talk about the birthday party because a few weeks ago, a few months ago, Erin popped on Instagram and she was talking about extravagant kids' birthday parties, how she's over that. It's embarrassing to throw extravagant birthday parties. Do you guys remember that? Embarrassing it is to do that. Um, and like, just blow money. Like, I'm still blowing a lot of money on this party, but it's not a wedding. It's a three-year-old's birthday. So we're going to be getting back down to earth here at this point in life and having normal parties, so. It's interesting she said a normal three-year-old birthday party because I'm sure normal to us is completely different than what she thinks normal is. When you see these inspirations, that is not what it's going to look like at all. That's just the linens that I got. And then I'm gonna show you the backdrop and um, just like the theme. So I also got a, a bouncy house, a unicorn bouncy house pink uh, sequin um, linens. I'll put the linens right here. It's not going to be like embarrassingly extra and over the top because the older I get, the more I kind of realize how embarrassing it is to do that. But just two months ago, she took her oldest daughter to Disney World and spent somewhere around $15,000 on her birthday trip. Here's a little shot of some of the birthday decor. I have to mention this because it's so obvious, but for those of you that don't follow Erin on Instagram or have been blocked on Instagram, she had her lip filler dissolved. And I am no expert in cosmetic procedures. I've never had anything done. 
So I'll talk about this to the best of my ability, but basically she had her lip filler dissolved because it was migrating. I think she has to get it completely dissolved. Then she can go back and get them filled again. But so many people have said she looks great without the lip filler. And I agree. Here's another picture. She said there's no filter on this picture. And you can see her lips are definitely starting, you know, to go down. Because they were really swollen at one point. The lip filler migrated to above her lip. So I think this picture looks great. They're Erin's lips. She's going to do whatever she wants to do with her lips. I don't really care what she does with her lips. But a lot of people have said she looks great without lip filler too. Now I've got to talk about the first day of school picture that Erin posted of her girls. A lot of people had a lot to say about this picture. Erin said, Our public school offers preschool to children of disabled vets. We're so thankful our girls get to be together. Happy first day, my angels. A lot of people were confused by this too because I got so many questions. Who's the disabled vet in Erin's family? So someone did ask her in the comments and Erin said, My husband. He has TBI and PTSD. Afghanistan 2010 to 2011. The viewer then responded and said, I'm so sorry to hear that. It must be so tough. Thank you for his service. Another viewer said, so grateful for his service to our country. I agree with this. Thank you, Nick, for your service to our country. Erin posted this picture of her girls and a lot of viewers had a lot to say. Some viewers said their shoes were too big. Their shoes were dirty. But this is what Erin had to say about it. So with native shoes, if you get them too tight, if they're barely even rubbing, they will rub blisters because natives aren't supposed to have socks with them. You're supposed to wear natives barefoot. So if you have them even remotely small on your feet, the kids will get blisters. So it's better for them to be a little bit loose. So here she is on social media justifying why her kid is wearing the shoes she's wearing. I want to talk more about this in a minute. Just let's keep watching. Loose than tight for two reasons. One, they can wear them longer, and two, they don't rub blisters. So, thank you so much for the input about the shoes, but we've got it covered here. Then Erin posted this. They could have picked any one of these hundred pairs. I don't make them wear anything they don't want to. So Erin let them choose their own outfit for the first day of school. They chose their own shoes, which is fine. I think that's completely fine. Look at the shoes those girls have. They have more shoes than I have. I wouldn't want all those shoes. It's too much. Too much clutter. I think we need to normalize kids going to school on the first day of school with shoes that they've already worn. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. If they wanted to wear a ball gown today, I would have let them wear a ball gown today. But they wanted to wear what they picked out. And as a six and four year old, I would want to be able to pick out what I wore. And I understand that apparently it's not up to some of your standards, but they picked what they picked. And I cannot believe that this is becoming like Pantgate, where Adeline wore a Christmas pantsuit and Skyla wore a pajama dress. Like, you have to be kidding me. I cannot believe that people are upset that they wore shoes that weren't brand new that are dirty. They're kids. They play in the dirt every day. Now, guess what? Day two of school, everyone who bought their kids brand new shoes, now they're dirty because they were on the playground all day. Like, really, there are so many things that you could hate me for. Honestly, there's a lot, and I wouldn't blame you. But this, you guys, I was feeling so, like, confident and good about today. And then I was, like, knocked down. When all of that was going down on social media, I got this comment from a viewer. Comments about the girls' first day of school outfits. And let me tell you, that just went all through me. I said, first of all, we can't cry about these people not being relatable and then critique things like this. Secondly, do you know how many kids go to school? with last year's clothes, shoes, backpacks, and supplies. And many don't have an effing choice. No haircut, no new kicks. Don't you think it would make them feel a little bit less insecure if that was normalized by the rich kids, the popular kids? Furthermore, focusing on perfection and all the new, new, new money, money, money is what will just make her less and less humble or realistic or relatable, like good. Wear their old shoes, please do. 
In the picture Erin posted of her girls, one child had a welcome to first grade shirt. The other child did not have a welcome to whatever grade she's going into shirt. So some people were saying, okay, well, you ordered a special shirt for one child, but not the other. And Erin posted this. It's a screenshot where she ordered both kids a special first day of school shirt and one shirt didn't arrive on time. So that's why one child had a special first day of school shirt and the other child did not. So yeah, I definitely think we need to normalize kids going to school on the first day without having new shoes. In my opinion, there's absolutely nothing wrong with kids going to school on the first day with shoes they've already worn before. So right now, Erin's girls are in elementary school. They can't read all the comments. They can't go to her DMs and read all of these things. My point is, they probably didn't know any of this was going on unless they heard Erin talk about it. But when you're a public figure and you post your kids online, you are subjecting them to feedback, criticism, and opinions of strangers, and they don't need that. So right now they're in elementary school. I'm sure they had no knowledge of some of these DMs and comments, but as they get older and they have access to social media, they will read these comments. Children do not need to read opinions feedback, criticism, comments from strangers online about what they wear, how they look, how their hair is fixed, if their shoes are dirty. It's hard enough for an adult to read comments like that about themselves online. Can you imagine a child having to read that stuff? No, don't expose your children to the public because the public isn't nice sometimes. The money isn't worth exposing your kids to social media strangers. It's really easy right now for Erin to shelter them from all of this because they're so young. They're in elementary school, but there will come a day when they see this information. They see all of this on social media. And it's one thing to read something about your mom on social media. It's a whole nother thing to read something about your childhood, about your shoes, about your hair, about your life on social media. And the only way to protect your kids from all of that is to not post them on social media. Don't use them for content. Don't post their first day of school picture to your public Instagram account where you run your business. If you wanna post their first day of school picture, create a private Instagram account and just follow friends and family and you can share those personal pictures. I'm sorry, but a first day of school picture to me is a personal picture. You can share those pictures with your friends and family. In my opinion, Erin needs to stop exposing her children to the public. Now, I think every adult on social media should take responsibility for their actions. But I also think if Erin didn't post her kids on social media, these comments and opinions wouldn't exist because no one would have anything to talk about when it comes to her kids. Because her girls already have an online footprint and their online footprint actually has nothing to do with them. And it has everything to do with Erin and everything that Erin has posted about their childhood. They can't give consent to any of this. They have a large online footprint and they're all so young. And one day, all of this will affect them. If not this coming Wednesday, the following Wednesday, if they're not looking how I want, I'm gonna go have this dissolved. So I have to trust the process. Um, but the amount of comments, like instantly, like my first thought is always like, man, I just feel bad for high school kids because having to deal with people comment on your appearance every day, like how do high school kids handle that? Exactly. Erin, think about what you just said. Think about that for a minute. Your girls have to grow up with all of these comments, opinions being thrown at them at a very young age. You know this is going to affect them. You know it will. Because you chose to expose them to social media. Because you chose to use them for content. You chose to use their childhood for content. You chose to post pictures of them on social media. They didn't consent to any of this. When they're 16, 17, 18 years old, they may say, F social media, I don't want anything to do with it. I wish you would have never posted me on social media. Look what I'm having to deal with now. Parents have to stop creating a digital footprint for their kids. You need to let your child do that at the appropriate age. 
As parents, I know we can't protect our kids from everything. It's impossible. But if you can protect them from certain things, I think you should protect your child when you can. And parents can absolutely protect their kids from social media. YouTube has been a little bit, you know, a lot toxic. Erin understands how toxic social media is, but she continues to post her kids. I cover a lot of mom content creators on my channel, and in my opinion, some of them wouldn't have a platform if they didn't post their children. Some of them would get no views, and they wouldn't be popular on social media without their kids. But I don't think that's true for Erin. I don't think viewers pay for her Instagram content or Erin and Nick uncut content to see her kids. I just don't think they do. I'm like a huge uh, advocate for like, you never have to lock yourself into anything ever. So I just feel like you can try all sorts of different things until you find the thing that you really feel passionate about. You don't ever have to lock yourself into something. Like if you start doing something and you're like, okay, I'm going to pivot. Like, I don't think that this is going to be like yeah. where I'm going to thrive the most. Like you just pivot. I agree. Pivot. If something isn't working out for you, pivot. Change the name. Just because you start out as a mommy blogger or a family channel doesn't mean you have to do that forever.